Hello, welcome to another walk in the spirit. I'm Steve, come with me as we have another walk. Now we are at a repeat location. I used to do a lot of videos on this trail, but I have since gone on to many other trails. I still do like this trail. I did do a video here, um, actually probably about a month ago, but probably two miles further down. Uh, but I thought, hey, let's try this trail again. It used to be a staple, a favorite of mine. So let's hit the trail and start our video today. Today I'm going to talk about the revelation of God. That's what I'm going to title this. Um, this connects, I would say, is inspired by a recent video of mine. You can find it here. I think it was called, Why God Doesn't Allow Evil. Perhaps not the best title. Um, but I, I just decided to discuss um, some of the things like atheists and unbelievers will argue about concerning God. Why can't God just allow uh, atheists and unbelievers to, to live in eternity? And I explain that. I'm going to go over one facet of that teaching in this video today. That God is going to reveal himself, and I believe he will reveal himself very, very soon. And that is at the Ezekiel 38 war. Now, I have done a video on the Ezekiel 38 war. And I'm not going to go over it in detail, though I'm going to speak about it. You can find my video here on the Ezekiel 38 war, uh, where I go into more detail concerning that war. I believe there is a, yep, there's a nest right there. So we're, on, we're going to follow the trail on this bigger river. Again, I used to do a lot of videos on this trail, so let's get started here. So we're going to go to Ezekiel, and we're going to read about how God is going to reveal himself during this war. Now, I, I'm not going to spend a lot of time detailing this. I'm going to read several verses out of 38 and 39, Ezekiel 38 and 39. But let's give a quick overview of this war. It is a group of nations that will attack Israel, and I believe soon. And this is Russia, Iran, Turkey, and a couple other countries. Two at least, maybe more. And they will attack Israel, and God is going to supernaturally protect Israel. And in doing this, he is going to reveal himself not only to Israel, but to the world. So let's go ahead and pull out our scripture and we'll read several verses out of Ezekiel where we see and learn that God indeed will do this and reveal himself to the world. I'm going to get a little closer to the river over here. The trail is nice and clear, although we did have a small snowstorm, got about two inches. This will be a good spot. Let me pull out my Bible and we'll get started. All right, we're going to start in Ezekiel chapter 38, although we'll read some in 39. We're going to read verses 16 to 23. You will come up against my people Israel like a cloud to cover the land. It will be in, a, in the latter days that I will bring you against my land so that the nations may know me when I am hallowed in you, O Gog, before their eyes. Gog, I believe, is Russia or the leader of Russia. There's Gog and Magog. One is the nation, one is the leader. I always forget which one is which. Verse 17, Thus says the Lord God, Are you he who I have spoken in former days by my servants, the prophets of, of Israel, who prophesied for years in those days that I would bring you against them? This is really interesting. Ezekiel is speaking by the Lord concerning his own prophecies of what we're reading now which is happening thousands of years later, as which is now. Verse 18, And it will come to pass at that same time, when God comes against the land of Israel, says the Lord God, that my fury will show in my face. For in my jealousy and in the fire of my wrath I have spoken. Surely in that day there will be a great earthquake in the land of Israel, so that the fish of the sea, the birds of the heavens, the beasts of the field, all creeping things that creep on the earth, and all men who are on the face of the earth shall shake at my presence. The mountains shall be thrown down, the steep 
the steep places shall fall and every wall shall fall to the ground. I will call for a sword against Gog throughout my mountain, says the Lord God. Every man's sword will be against his brother. Verse 22, and I will bring him to judgment with pestilence and bloodshed. I will rain down on him, on his troops, and on the peoples who are with him, flooding rain, great hailstones, fire, and brimstone. Thus I will magnif magnify myself and sanctify myself, and I will be known in the eyes of many nations. Then they shall know that I am the Lord. Now, it is known that Israel is a great, has a great military force. Even though it is a small nation, I think it's in like the top 10, and maybe even like the top five, I don't remember where its ranking is, of its strength and power in the world. But when you're going up against Turkey, Russia, and Iran, and other nations, it doesn't have a chance, right? God is going to get the glory as he defeats these nations uh, to protect his people, Israel. Okay, I'm going to continue in, in uh, 39. Let's just go to another spot here. I will go right here. All right, let's pull out my notes and read some of the verses in 39. I'll be right back. All right, Ezekiel 39, we're going to read verses 6 and 7. Then we're going to drop down to, I believe, 21. So let's read 6 and 7, then I've got to turn the page for 21 through 29. Verse 6. And I will send fire on Magog and all those who live in the security in the coastlands. Then they shall know that I am the Lord. So I will make my holy name known in the midst of my people Israel, and I will not let them profane my holy name anymore. Then the nations shall know that I am the Lord, the Holy One in Israel. All right, let me turn the page. I'll be right back. All right, Ezekiel 39, 21 through 29. I will set my glory among the nations. All the nations shall see my judgment, which I have executed, and my hand, which I have laid on them. So the house of Israel shall know that I am the Lord their God from that day forward. The Gentiles shall know that the house of Israel went into captivity for their iniquity because they were unfaithful to me. Therefore I have hid my face from them. I gave them into the hand of their enemies and they all fell by the sword. According to their uncleanness and according to their transgressions, I have dealt with them hidden my face from them verse 25 therefore thus says the lord god i will now bring my captives of jacob and have mercy on the whole house of israel and i will be jealous for my holy name and they have borne their shame and all their unfaithfulness in which they were unfaithful to me when they dwell safely in their own land and no no and no one made them afraid when I have brought them back from the peoples and gathered them out of their enemies' lands, I am hallowed in them in the sight of many nations. Then they shall know that I am the Lord their God, who set them into captivity among the nations, but also brought them back to their land and left none of them captive any longer. And I will not hide my face from them any more, for I shall have poured out my spirit on the house of Israel, says the Lord God. Let me put the Bible away. I'll be right back. All right, so here we learn that during the Ezekiel 38 war, God is going to redeem and protect Israel. Now, I also think Ezekiel 38 and 39 speaks about the time before the war, the time now, where all the Israelites from all over the world are gathering to Israel. I just learned from Amir maybe a month, two months ago, that it is projected, I don't know, like hundreds of thousands, maybe like a million, something like that, I don't remember what the number is, are projected to come back to Israel from Russia and Ukraine. That war in Russia and Ukraine is sending many Israelites back to the land of Israel. And I believe that these verses speak of that, okay? It is a, a strong prophecy. I think it's Ezekiel 37. I don't, it's a previous chapter. I'll put it on the screen. I'm not going to read it. Just the chapter number. You can read it yourself. 
where Ezekiel prophesies Israel coming back together. And th these two chapters speak of it, but there's another chapter that speaks of it in greater detail. And of course, that is also part of the prophecy that Jesus gave concerning the olive tree budding forth. Okay, so these are prophecies concerning the end times, as it says right there in Ezekiel. And I think we're at those times. So God is going to show himself forth to the world, to Israel. And people may say, well, how come there won't be a great outpouring and a great revival? There will be. The last verse speaks about the Holy Spirit coming upon Israel. And I did a video on a coming revival, which many call the latter rain. Many people in speaking about the end time revival, uh, many of them believe it will happen before the rapture, but I believe it will happen after the rapture. And you can see that video here. All right, I got to travel underneath the overpass. I'll be right back. Let's get out of this traffic noise. All right, so I think that these events are coming soon. Uh, Amir just put out, and I think about two or three days ago, uh, about the events happening now, that there is a short window of Israel has to... Um, destroy the Iranian uh, nuclear facilities. I'll, I'll link to Amir's update here. It's very important. I'll go over briefly some of the details. So if you don't know what this is going on about. So Iran hates Israel. In their Islamic prophecies, they believe that their Messiah will come about, will come to the earth, after Islam destroys Israel. That is why Iran wants a nuclear weapon, is they want to destroy Israel and bring about their Messiah. Their destruction, their, their desire to destroy Israel is real, it's true, and that is why it is a threat to Israel. And they have enriched their, um, their nuclear material high enough to, to make a nuclear weapon. Um, and so Israel has to destroy that, those facilities, their ability to create that weapon and send that weapon. And, it, and that window is getting smaller and smaller. Iran is starting to make deals with Russia. Uh, Russia is already getting Iranian drones. Russia is promising to bring them some new advanced uh, fighter jets. The Iranian uh, Air Force is super old, like they have planes from the 70s. So that's why uh, Israel has able to go to Iran and do whatever they want. But if they get the Russian technology, Russian fighters, even Russian uh, defense missiles, that will make it even more difficult or nearly impossible to do what they need to do. Although Israel is very secretive and has a lot of uh, knowledge of how to do and get to the things that they need to get rid of, I think they could get past that, but it would definitely be more difficult. So their window is getting smaller and smaller. Matter of fact, I think it is in like 10, 11, 12 days, they're supposed to get these, these uh, uh, technologies from Russia. So time is short. And Russia and Iran are becoming closer and closer allies. Russia and Israel used to be, you know, somewhat allies. Um, and that is being strained more and more. So see that uh, update from Amir to get more understanding of these things. I don't want to spend a lot of time on that. The threat of Iran is real. And I think Israel will attack them very, very soon. It could happen before this video goes up. Or it could happen in the next few days or a couple weeks. They've already announced it's going to happen. The world knows it's going to happen. It's going to happen. Okay? And that, I think, will trigger another prophecy found in Isaiah 17.1. The destruction of Damascus. I'll go ahead and put that verse on the screen. I'm not going to read it. And many people who study prophecy, scholars and students, 
um, believe that the Isaiah 17 one will more than likely trigger the Ezekiel 38 war. Thus, I believe these events are near. Now, it is my belief that the rapture is going to happen before the Ezekiel 38 war and po probably before Isaiah 17 one. So I really believe that uh, the, the rapture is super imminent. Of course, I've believed that for the last couple of years. I don't know the day or hour. These events might be later than I think, okay? We just don't know the timing of all this stuff, folks. I don't have a thus says the Lord on that, okay? But when we look at what's going on in the world, we read these news things that are happening in this world, we see that time is short. So why won't the whole world turn and repent and turn to God? Okay, because what the, what the unbelievers and the atheists are saying is not true. Just because they say, well, once we see God, then everything will change, that's not true. There is a delusion, and I think this points to the fact the delusion is already here. People today on the left, the liberals, those ungodly people who do not serve God, think that the truth that they have is stronger than the Bible, and that they will come to a point, as I shared in that other video that I made about a month ago or less, uh, why God doesn't allow e evil is because their hearts have been turned to wickedness and they love wickedness more than God. So even if they see God and see his miracles, they want their truth. They don't want God's truth. So let's let's bring about this uh, understanding from the scriptures in 2 Thess Thessalonians chapter 2, where we, we, learn, we read and learn about the great delusion let me pull out my Bible, and I'll be right back. All right, I'm back. I want to apologize. The traffic noise is really loud here today, but I think we can get past that. All right, we're going to 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. We're going to read verses 7 through 12. For the mystery of lawlessness is already at work. Only he who now restrains will do so until he is taken out of the way. And then the lawless one will be revealed, whom the Lord will consume with the breath of his coming, the breath of his mouth, and destroy with the brightness of his coming. So there is a lawlessness in the earth now, until the restrainer is gone. The restrainer is those of us who are overcoming Christians, we who have the salt. Okay? The rapture happens, then the lawless one, the Antichrist, will appear. The coming of the lawless one is according to the working of Satan, with all power, signs, and lying wonders, and with all unrighteous deception among those who perish, because they did not receive the love of the truth, that they might be saved. So here we learn that they will be deceived because they don't love the truth. They don't want to be saved. They want their sin. They want their wickedness. For this reason, God will send them strong delusion that they should believe the lie, that they may be condemned who do not believe the truth, but had pleasure in unrighteousness. So I am convinced, and I've been convinced for a couple years now, and just studying the book of Revelation and understanding, I mean, excuse me, studying uh, Ezekiel and understanding that these events are coming near, for, for God to reveal himself in such a way at the Ezekiel 38 war, one of two things has to happen. One, the world will see God and repent because they know God is real, or the delusion is already here or will happen very, very soon. I believe it's here. So that people's hearts will be hardened even when they see the presence of God in the earth. Now, they're not going to see God, but they're going to see his hand. They're going to see his power. They're going to see that Israel will survive the attack of several nations, okay? Even by Russia. So I think this is strong, strong evidence that the delusion is here. And the, the, the idea that these atheists say, well, why doesn't God just show himself? Well, he is going to reveal himself. The revelation of God is going to be here. I've talked about that in that previous video about how God is not going to allow evil. He's going to manifest himself during the tribulations and they will even say they will still refuse 
to repent of their evil ways. Please see that video for more. So no matter how much God is going to reveal himself, there are some people whose heart is so hardened that they, they love wickedness so much that they will re refuse the truth. And this is the one time, I think, in history where God and Satan are working in agreement. Satan wants to delude them because he wants as many people to follow him because he hates God. And God no longer wants people living in gray areas. God wants everybody to, to follow the truth or deny him. One or the other. I've had several videos over there will be no more gray areas. Okay, I'll, leave, I'll link to one here if I have room. Otherwise, I'll link to it below. God wants people to know the truth. He is revealing himself. So when the rapture happens, people will start thinking, well, this is what they said. Now, again, there's going to be some lies about that, but they're not going to, dis these lies are not going to dissuade everyone, but there's going to be lies there. They're going to be dissuaded, persuaded not to believe it's God because of the lies of, of Satan, yes, but also because of the deception, the great delusion that God is pouring upon the earth. But it will become so clear that God is there, they won't be able to deny it. Okay, they will have to harden their hearts even more. And even then, once the tribulation starts, God is going to reveal his power. There will be the tribulation saints. There will be miracles on the earth by the saints, by God. We'll have the two prophets in, 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 in Jerusalem. Okay, they're going to be doing many miracles and prophesying of God. But yes, there will also be the miracles of the Antichrist, the false prophet, and many others who are doing signs and wonders for Satan. Miracles are going to be all over the place. People will know that there is a spiritual battle going on and they will choose to worship Satan. I've shared that scripture several times in recent videos. Maybe you've missed it. I'll put it on the screen now. The Bible says in the book of Revelation, the whole world will worship Satan. See that on the screen now. All right, folks, that's about it. I just wanted to, to show this truth that God is revealing himself very, very soon. We're in the age of grace, where God is looking for faithfulness. It says in Luke, I believe it's in Luke, when Jesus comes, will he find faith on the earth? I'll put that verse on the screen. And there's another scripture, I can't remember where it is, I think it's in Hebrews, where he is looking for faith and he will reward faith, something to this effect. I think I'm getting it wrong, but I'll find the verse that I'm speaking of and put that on the screen. I think it's something to the fact of, and you have already seen it, that he's a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. If not, I'll put that verse on the screen as well. Now is the time to repent. Okay, sure, people can repent and people will repent once these miracles happen during the Ezekiel 38 war and we'll have a great revival. But you will have missed the rapture and you will have to suffer the tribulation. Uh, now, sure, the tribulation is, is the anger of God and judgment on the world. Uh, and uh, many of those judgments aren't, uh, aren't going to be upon the Christians, those who repent. But the, there will be persecution uh, upon the believers during the tribulation. And God even uh, ordains and allows the Antichrist to overcome and persecute the Christians. So maybe you don't know that verse. I'll put that verse on the screen.
and I'm gonna head back and get closer to uh, this bigger highway and we're just about done so now is the time to repent now is the time to turn to God now is the time to be ready and to be raptured so are you ready to repent and turn your life over to Christ you must be born again there is a difference between believing in Christ for your salvation and accepting the second work of the cross Galatians 2 20 for I've been crucified in Christ it is no longer I who live but it's Christ who lives me in me I'll have that verse on the screen but I won't have quoted all of it now I do another video called believing versus born again I probably have run out of room if I have room here otherwise I'll link to it below you can watch that video to learn the difference between believing versus being born again you need to be born again to be raptured the rapture is coming soon it is time to repent it's time to accept that we cannot obey God on our own we cannot follow God on our own even if we believe in Jesus we still need to walk in the truth that we've been crucified in him and letting him live in us and through us that doesn't mean if we sin we've lost it okay John says in John first John chapter 1 it's either 8 or 9 or verses 7 and 8 he says if we say we have no sin we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us but if we confess our sins God who is faithful and just will forgive us of our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness I am not and God is not looking for you to be sin free God is however looking for you to repent and when you sin you repent you get back up and you start walking in the truth that you've been crucified at Christ that will allow you to be in that born-again status and to be raptured all right folks that's all for now hopefully I've given you some clarity on taking the signs and and the season that we're in in the severity of truth that time is short now true we don't know the day or the hour true I could be off out of times of the seasons but there's so much going on it's time to take things seriously and it won't hurt you it will only benefit you to repent and to turn to God even if we have months weeks years left well that's all for now God bless we'll see you again soon Lord willing if we're not raptured praise God I hope we are or if we're not if I'm not censored God bless folks have a good day. Bye-bye. Hello, everyone. Coming to you today to speak to you about Praying Hands Ministry. Lately, I've been doing many of my videos, and I've been talking about their need and desire to create uh, a, a school for them to go to and asking for donations for their education. Many of you may not be interested in donating to that, and we understand but they still have needs. They still need to have food for the orphans and for the widows. And I'm coming to you today, if you would just consider donating for this need. Now, I also did a video recently talking about how many people who are taking care of, of orphans and widows will try to manipulate us through pictures of needy children. And I'm not here to do that to you. I'm here to tell you about Nadim, who takes care of the widows and the orphans. Not only does he take care of them with food and shelter and, and natural helps, but he also, and this is the important thing, he tells them about Jesus and the Bible and teaches them about God and his ways. That is why God turned my heart to help Nadim. This is the brother who's running Praying Hands Ministry, and he certainly has a heart for God to do things God's way. He isn't out there bothering and pestering people to donate over and over again and trusting in pictures of sad children in horrible estates. He tells people that I am here to help feed the children, but most importantly to help them to grow in Christ, to understand the Bible, and to know Christ and go into eternity having them secured their salvation by believing in Christ. Now I will share a few video pictures some pictures of the place where he ministers to the children and the orphans so you can see that this place is real.
but I'm not here to show you sad pictures of hungry children because he takes care of them because God provides their needs because that's what we trust in. We trust in God. But God can turn our hearts to help the children. It is godly to help orphans and the, ch and the, and the children need our help. But I'm asking you to consider donating not because strictly because they feed them because they're hungry, but because Nadim takes care of their spiritual needs that they can grow in Jesus and know him as well as be fed and take care of naturally. So I'm going to share a few pictures here so you can see that he does feed them and that it is not a sad, scary situation to try to manipulate you to give money. I know a lot of you don't have a lot of money. A lot of us are having problems here or wherever we live due to the inflation that we're seeing in the world today. Perhaps some of you can just give a dollar. Some of you can give you five dollars. That's great. Anything that you can consider uh, with what you have to donate to us, we sure, certainly appreciate it. I'll put a link on the screen of the web page I created through PayPal that all the money sent to that page goes to Nadim to help the children and to help the widows in this situation. And at the end or below in the video, below the video in the description, I'll have a link where you can click on to donate to the cause. Thank you. I'm going to share a few pictures here of the orphans and the widows and where they live so you can take see that he does take care of them, not only physically and naturally, but he also does teach them God's word, and tells them about Jesus. God bless. I hope you consider donating today. Have a good day. Bye-bye.